So when looking at expiration results for rare earth element mineralisation, it can be quite a bit more complicated than you might see for copper or gold expiration. So I wanted to explain some of the key uh, things to look out for and some of the differences. So the first thing you need to look at is whether uh, you're exploring for a hard rock or a clay hosted style of rare earth element system. If it's a hard rock system, to be economic, the grades have to generally be above 1% and might be 2 or 3%. If it's a clay hosted or iron absorbed style system, the grades can be a lot lower because it's cheaper to extract. So you'd be looking at around the 500 to 750 ppm sort of grades. But what is important is you need large tonnages. Uh, to be able to get the, uh, the bulk of the rare earths out of it and also it has to be close to surface. So when you're looking at a clay hosted rare earth element system, one of the most important things is how you extract or you um, beneficiate the, the rare earths from the clay hosted material. One of the most prospective style of deposits is an iron absorbed system. So that means that you can easily extract those rare earths from the clay material. So one of the other things to look at with the clay hosted results um, is that whether that product has been beneficiated. So what that means is when we're looking to produce a kaolin product along with the rare earth is we sieve out all the coarse material from the kaolin and we keep that kaolin material which has the rare earth attached to it. And we call that the minus 45 fraction because we sieve it down to 45 microns which leaves us with all that fine material. And then we analyse the rare earths which are attached to that fine kaolin material. So that is the beneficiated fraction, which is called, called the minus 45 fraction. So the reason that we'd be reporting beneficiated results and sieving out that fine fraction of kaolin is that the rare earths are generally attached preferentially to the kaolin. And we'd also be looking at producing both a kaolin product for high purity alumina and also uh, dissolving the rare earths out of that clay and producing a rare earth element concentrate. And doing this process, it improves the quality of the kaolin material and it also highly concentrates the rare earths that are associated with it. So sometimes it can concentrate those rare earths by over 200%. So if you really want to drill down into the rare earth element results, there's one last thing to consider. Uh, generally results are reported as a total rare earth element oxide and that's made up of 17 individual rare earth elements. However, there are four of those which are the most important, and they are neodymium, presidium, dysprosium, and terbium, and we call them the magnetic rare earth elements. And it's those elements that we believe are going to have the highest demand in the future because they're going to be used in high field strength magnets, which are used in the motors of electric vehicles, and also in the, the motors of electric wind turbines that are going to allow the transition to a renewable energy economy. So if you're looking for an economic rare earth element deposit, it's really those that are enriched in those four elements that are likely to be the most economic. So hopefully that explanation will help you pull apart those rare earth element exploration results and help you understand what is important in an economic resource.